So let's talk about the graph editor. In this video, we're going to go over the capabilities of the graph editor, but not necessarily how to best use it. That's up to you guys as an animator and how to tweak things in a way that you think is best. So first things first, you can actually select these nodes, these various different nodes, and transform them in the same way you would in the viewport. Simply hit G to grab, or R to rotate, or S to scale. And it's very intuitive and very, very, very nice. You can also, of course, select multiple nodes and manipulate them that way. But sometimes you're not really sure what you're grabbing and you have to see exactly what you're looking at on the left, especially since many of them are the same color. Well, I would recommend simply select the channel that you want to see, hit Shift H, and suddenly that's the only channel that you can see. You can also hit the Home button to zoom in to whatever graph you want to look at. And of course, you can then manipulate as you see fit, and it will only manipulate this, especially if you want to use proportional editing, which is possible, by the way. You can use proportional editing in here as well, and it won't affect any of the other curves unless you have them visible as well. So that's very nice. Of course, if you want to reveal all the curves again, simply hit Alt-H, and that will bring all the curves back. Hit Home to zoom out, and there you go. A couple other cool things. You can actually create keyframes simply by duplicating a keyframe and moving that over here. I'm just gonna move this here, turn off proportional editing with the O key, move this here, scale that down, and voila, I have a new keyframe. Now, I, maybe I want to do a bit of a shakiness to it and bring it like so, something pretty crazy and wild. There we go. Now, one thing you can do in the Blender graph editor that you can't do in other graph editors that I've seen is you can actually select multiple nodes here and you can rotate them relative to each other. And this is actually very helpful for situations like this where I, if I want, for example, if there's a general slope here that I want, but I don't want it to be as steep, I can simply select these here and this one and just rotate it a little bit and move it out and keep the exact same shakiness that I had before, but just have it a little bit less intense. And so that's very nice. You can also select these handles individually if you like and manipulate them that way, but I prefer this way, but it's up to you. And of course, you can delete keyframes individually for each channel in the graph editor as well. On top of that, you can also do almost anything you can do in the dope sheet, which includes handle types. If I hit V, I can change it to vector type. There we go. I can change this into vector type if I want. There we go. And you can also change the interpolation type. If I select everything and change it to constant, you can see what that looks like in the graph editor or I can change it to linear. You can see what that looks like in the graph editor. You can also do a couple things with modifiers. So you'll see that there's a panel here, which you can also open up with the N key. And you can go to the modifiers tab and you can add a modifier. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to Bezier and back to auto clamped. So we can take a look at this, how it looks. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to, let's say the X Euler rotation. So the X Euler rotation is basically rotating the cube by quite a bit. So you can see that it's rotating based on how much this is rotating. Now that we know that, I can actually go ahead and take this modifier and what if I want some noise? I just add a lot of noise in here. So I can actually go in here and change the strength of this noise to be very high and you'll notice that the cube is now shaking. This is just from a modifier, no keyframes, and it's very, very easy to use. You can also, let's go ahead and drag this out a little bit so I can read these parameters here. And you can restrict the frame range right here. And I can say I'll start at zero and end at 10, for example. So it only shakes at the beginning or end at 80 and start at, let's say 50. So let's say at the very beginning it's normal and then suddenly it starts shaking. There you go. So that's pretty nice. Um, of course, you have other modifiers that you can play around with as well, including cycles, which allows you to repeat an animation over and over again. But of course we have to make it within the time frame here. So now it's just rotating again and again and again and again and again and again. And that's repeating your animation from one frame to another. And that's it for the general overview for the graph editor. It's also a very powerful tool for animation and I encourage you play around with it. Anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful.